You were assigned to attend the king? Yes, sir. Where did he go? Sir, I, I, I cannot tell you. As your commander, I order you to tell me. The king pledged me to silence. Where is he? He went with a scouting party. Scouting party? What scouting party? Every night, so we send out small patrols to test the walls of the city. And tonight? Tonight, the waterway under the north wall. A patrol of 20 men under Captain Uriah. You let him go? I could not stop him, sir. We had finished the dispatches. The king stood in the mouth of the tent as the patrol went by. He looked after them, and suddenly he took up a sword and followed them. Take a hundred of your best men and go after them. Sir. Call the physician. No, no, let it alone. It's a long time since I've shed any blood. It's good to have proof that it still runs in my veins. Sit down, George. We must decide on our strategy. Forever is well defended. Unfortunately, there are no Joshuas among us to command the walls to fall down. What would you do, Uriah? I can speak for the men, sir. Every man in the army would be glad to die for David. A thousand dead, perhaps two. A thousand vineyards and flocks left untended. A thousand women wailing on my doorstep. You have a wife, Uriah? Yes, sir. She will come to my door in tears. If I am unlucky. No, it is a certainty. In wartime, the best are always the first to die. Then her tears will be tears of pride. You're too young to know much of women and too brave, whereas I am a coward. A coward, sir? My men go into battle singing an old song. Saul has slain his thousands, and David is ten thousands. That was years ago, when I was captain of a hundred like yourself. I was not the king. You will serve me better if you live, your honor. Come, George. Mm. Remain seated. Continue with your meal. I will return to Jerusalem in the morning. O King of Judah and Israel, live forever. The Pharaoh of Egypt sends greetings to his beloved cousin. The Pharaoh bids me prostrate myself before the great king.
And to present this humble token of Egypt's regard. The King of Israel warms himself in the sun of the Pharaoh's regard. with David. That is his custom to walk with Nathan. God looks with favor on your plan to bring the Ark of the Covenant into Jerusalem. Excellent. But as to your intention of building a temple to receive the Ark, he has commanded me to say this to you. Thus speaks the Lord. Should my servant David build me a house to dwell in? For I have not dwelt in a house since the day I brought the Israelites up out of Egypt, even to this day, but ever lived in a tent. Have I ever, in all these years, demanded that a temple be built for me? Now, therefore, I say to David, I took you from the pasture, from guarding your sheep, to make you shepherd over my people, even over all Israel. Yes, yes, I understand. God sees no need of a temple. Is that it? That is his word. Very well, I leave such decisions to you. To God, sire. Whatever you like. You may take full charge of the arrangements to bring the Ark here from Baal, Judah. My father, will you hear my petition? Heaven and my son, you need not beg for an audience. You promised me as the heir to Israel all the vineyards north of the Mount of Olives as far as the borders of Ephraim. Yet you have given the large vineyard on the Gibeon Road to Absalom. Did I? Only last month you said it was mine. Yet Amnon claims it. I demand only justice. And what does Absalom demand? Justice, too. Then no matter how I decide, I am unjust. The vineyard belongs to Amnon. Thank you, my father. 